Thank you for attending our session so late in the fr Friday, just before we go or go for, for fun. So uh, that's the contour intro and deep dive. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through this one. It's like we're the three spirits of contour or Christmas. I'm the past, that's the present and the future over there. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna cover um, uh, what happened through the last year in terms of um, community. So that's the team. Uh, as you can see, it's primarily built from uh, VMware folks, uh, but we have a few from Bloomy and Ericsson. Uh, on stage, we have Nick, who is a t technology lead, and then we have Nigel, uh, the current community manager, and I'm Orlin, the previous community manager, as I said, the past. So uh, with that said, um, that's from the last May until this May. So we have um, 230 contributors in total. As you can see, we have um, 41 new com committers uh, which join, join the, the organization. We have 16 releases, and overall, we, we had uh, 620 PRs opened and merged. And we gained not much attraction in the stars in GitHub, but that, uh, nobody counts that. <laughs> Bad measure, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So um, what we are proud of is the average, average hours of um, response for PR. So from open to merge, we tend to be around 12 hours, which is uh, we find super cool. And we're kind of responsive community. Um, so the new community managers, that's me and, and Nigel, thanks to Jonas, who was the previous, previous, previous community manager. What else well, we did? Uh, we started a technical docs writing group, well, which is an effort to try to combine uh, the, um, the community to support the technical writing and to, to be able to include more diverse uh, folks into the community in terms not to be only technical and um, code dis um, contributions, but uh, technical um, and writing. OK, I said that a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> also, we uh, implemented new levels of uh, community roles. So we have now reviewers, contributors, which allows the community to be more easily accessible. So you don't have to be aiming towards the maintainer right out the door. You can go through the layer, and, and it's more easy. So um, maybe I forgot to ask, how, how many of you are using Contour on a daily basis? Oh, hey, damn. OK. Cool. OK. So who, who knows what Contour is then? OK. OK, that's much okay. better. <laughs> but in, 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 in general, Contour is the ingress controller. And it's a, a control plane for Envoy. Um, we have the um, API gateway in, in, uh, implemented, and we have the CRD for HTTP proxy. Um, I did a talk on FOSDEM this year, uh, in the beginning of the year, and it's, it's linked there. So if you want to get more into uh, what Contour is and some demos, you, you can follow the link. Um, that wall of, of words over there is actually our uh, contributor champions, and it's a thank you slide for everyone who is contributing, and I'm going to read them one by one right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> but <laughs> but thank you, everyone, who uh, spent their time and, and, and made that project super nice. Um, and for the last one, it's, again, maybe not very easy to read. It's more for a reference. Um, how many organizations are actually willing to spend their time and their employees' time uh, for our project? Uh, you can see the list is super huge. Yeah, there are a few on top, which is VMware, Ericsson, and Red Hat. Those are the three major playing uh, in the in the field right now. With that, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll give the word to Nick to continue with the All demo. Right. No worries. Okay, so everyone can hear me fine, yeah? Sweet. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to sort of give a bit of an update about our, our roadmap, uh, and then do a, see if I can if the demo gods smile on me and I can smash out a quick demo for you of. Uh, what uh, what our current gateway uh, setup looks like. Um, so yeah, the first thing, speaking of gateway, that we need to talk about is uh, Envoy Gateway. Okay, so who here has seen the announcement about uh, Envoy Gateway? No? Okay, cool. Excellent. A few people. Great. So um, Envoy Gateway is um, Envoy Gateway is a new initiative from four organizations, uh, VMware, Tetrate, Ambassador, and Fidelity. So the VMware is obviously me and the other co VMware contour maintainers. Um, we're going to build a gateway API implementation that uses uh, Envoy as the, as the data plane, but it, this one is a branded Envoy sub-project. So this is a, a different thing to Contour that's built under the Envoy banner. And so like, one of the things I was worried about with this announcement is that people would be worried, you know, like, that's the same sort of thing as Contour is. And so one of the things I, was, uh, I thought that people might be worried about is 
you know, what's going to happen to Contour. So uh, yeah, I've got uh, that QR link is the link to the blog post that I wrote um, that sort of explains where we're at. Um, and so if you want any details about what's going on with that, you definitely should uh, grab that Q QR thing, code thing. Um, and sort of these are some of the questions I anticipated people asking, like, you know, will Contour stop being released? Is Contour going to be absorbed into Envoy Gateway? Um, and so here's our, sorry, does anyone want me to go back so you can take a picture of that? No? Cool. Yeah? No, OK, good. Um, so this is our commitment to our users. Um, the, the short answer is no, Contour's not going anywhere. Um, Contour is staying where it is. We will continue f feature development on Contour. We've got, you know, I'll talk more about the roadmap in a minute. But um, we're not going anywhere, um, and we want to give you this commitment. Like, no one's going to be left behind, um, no matter what happens with Envoy Gateway. As long as people are using Contour, you know, we will we'll help maintain and support it. Um, for those people who do want to move to the Gateway API uh, and Envoy Gateway, We'll provide tooling to help you convert uh, HTTP proxy resources to Gateway API resources. Um, uh, actually, sorry, the bit I missed at the start of this is the headline here is that we're going to be moving the Gateway API development, though, resources over to Envoy Gateway. So we're going to sort of round out the Gateway API support that's in Contour that I'll demo for you in a little bit. Um, and then we're going to sort of move that effort over to Envoy Gateway. But the rest of Contour's development will continue as per normal, OK? Um, so, yeah, we want, we want to make it so that you can move to Gateway API. Gateway API is the future of Ingress and Kubernetes, definitely. Um, and if any of what I'm saying right now does change, we will give you, we'll, we'll tell you, shout as loud as we can on every, uh, every sh uh, channel we have to shout at you at, uh, and make, make sure we give you any notice if any of this changes. But the, the key part is that I want you to know is Contra is not going anywhere. We pledge to you when we, uh, all versions after 119 would always have at least one year of support. Um, and that, that has not changed. Uh, so, you know, nothing, nothing will change that unless we tell you otherwise, in which case we still got to give you a year's notice because that's what we promised you. Okay? So I just wanted to set everyone's mind at ease who might have heard the Envoy Gateway news that, you know, there's nothing to panic about. We're not going anywhere. Contra is staying around. You know, of course, maybe two years in the future, like Envoy Gateway is a completely awesome solution and there's no reason for you to use Contour, then, then maybe we'll have a chat. But there's a lot of things that have to happen for something like that to happen. So there is no, I still strongly recommend if you're interested in Contour, it is 100% fine to pick up and get using right now. Um, and any change that you need to do in the future, we will hold your hand every step of the way. Now, I think I am going to just stop for a sec to say, does anyone have any questions about this? Because it's super important that we get this right for the community. OK, cool. OK, no worries. So if you do have any other questions about it, I'm Young Nick on Twitter, Young Nick on GitHub. Please feel free to hit me up and ask, OK? And those, those of you playing at home, uh, same goes for you. If you have any questions about any of this, read the blog post and hit me up about it if need be, OK? OK. So let's talk about roadmap. OK, so we're still actually in the process. The, this whole Envoy Gateway thing happened very quickly in the last like five weeks. Uh, it went from nothing. I had no idea it was going to happen to it was announced like on Monday. Uh, and so uh, we're still in the process of updating the roadmap, but this is the sort of big things that we're thinking about what's coming up in the future for Contour. So uh, a much better auth experience. We already have support for um, being able to bring your own external auth server and uh, integrate external auth into Contour. But like right now, the, the install experience and stuff like that, it leaves quite a bit to be desired. Um, so we're, we're looking at both helping you with being able to install the, an external auth service to give you lots of flexibility. But also, um, uh, I've been looking at making it so you can configure the OAuth filter that sits inside Envoy so that you'll be able to, when that's done, you'll be able to use a HTTP proxy resource and request OAuth for any, anything that you are protecting, like that you are exposing via Contour with a pretty simple uh, setup. The OAuth filter is a little tricky, uh, and there's a lot to figure out with it, and it's still alpha, so there's quite a lot of work there left to do. It's taking a lot longer than I thought it would, to be honest. Um, we've got uh, Sanjay from our team is working on a bunch of XDS updates. Um, those of you who might not have used Contour before, XDS is the, is the uh, protocol that uh, Envoy and its control plane use to communicate. Um, actually wiring up your control plane so that it talks XDS to, Convo to Envoy in the most efficient way possible is a surprisingly different, difficult problem. Uh, and so, yeah, we've, uh, Sanjay's spending a lot of uh, engineering effort in sort of tightening up that uh, and helping get that sorted. Uh, and then the last one that uh, I really want to get done 
is a tracing. Tracing has been outstanding on our roadmap for a long time, way too long. Um, to the extent that I know that the issue number is uh, number 399 in the Contour repo, um, because it has been around for so long and I've had to reference it so many times. Um, that, is, that one is held up on a um, redesign of our extension service CRD, which is linked to the HTTP proxy one. Uh, so yeah, it, it, these are, all of these things are coming. Um, so that is, that is for those of you who you know, know quite a bit about Contour already. We're kind of putting the deep dive a little bit before the intro, so sorry. Um, but uh, now, uh, next up, I would like to run you through a quick demo. Now, so, uh, no, it's this way. Okay, that's good. Is the text big enough? Everyone can see that? Yep, cool, cool. Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen the Gateway API before, um, the Gateway API involves uh, a set of resources that basically will do, in this case, I'm going to show you what the Gateway API setup that replicates what an ingress would look like in Kubernetes looks like. Okay, so that needs, first, you need a Gateway class, which is just like an ingress class uh, in, uh, you know, with ingress. Uh, it's just it's basically just a bucket to hold gateways. Um, now, there's a possibility that you can use that to configure like special parameters and stuff. I haven't in this case because this is a pretty simple use case. Um, after that, so I'm gonna, I have a, a cluster running here, uh, just a local kind cluster. Um, and so yeah, I've got the, I've got our gateway, our automatic gateway provisioner already up and running. What that does is it watches the the cluster for gateway class gateway resources and provisions a whole, a contour and envoy to match your gateway request. So the gateway is the key resource in the gateway API. It's like the, it's the way that you define how the traffic should get into your cluster. So in, um, in a lot of, it's a little bit like in some ways the bits of the service or type load balancer that lets you, um, you know, expose certain ports and stuff like that. But it's also where you attach the routes to, which I'll get to in a minute. So, um, First thing, I'll uh, apply the uh, gateway class. Okay, no problems there. Um, now let's uh, show you the show you the gateway. Pretty simple gateway here. This is just saying, hey, create a gateway in namespace project contour. Um, the gateway class name is the one that I just created, the contour gateway class, and it has a HTTP listener. I'm not going to worry about all the shenanigans involved in TLS at this point. It's a little too hard for a simple demo like this. Um, so yeah, all this says is, hey, listen for HTTP on port 80 and allow any route from any namespace to attach to this gateway. So you'll see that uh, this one of the different things to ingress is that the route, the details of like what uh, host name, what, um, you know, what path and all that sort of stuff, that's not in this object. All this object has is like uh, port and the protocol and what's allowed to attach to it, right? So I'll apply that one. Okay, so a bunch of magic is now happening. Um, okay, so you can see um, we've started uh, uh, con two contour pods uh, and an envoy uh, daemon set has started up as well. Um, so when I created that gateway object, these, these were not present before. I don't know if you noticed before, when I did kget pod here, it was only the gateway provisioner running. Um, when I create the gateway object, all these, the, the gateway provisioner magically goes off and creates the, the contour and the envoy pods for you um, so that you don't need to go, you know, inst go and figure out how to install like contour itself and envoy. The gateway provisioner knows how to do that for you and does that in response to you creating a gateway. Okay? Uh, so that one is ready. The contour pods are ready. We are good to go. Um, so um, in order to do that, uh, hang on, I'm going to switch to default namespace. Um, so no pods in the default namespace. Actually, if I there's there's only the default Kubernetes service in the, in this namespace at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, quickly apply a quick uh, Kubernetes up and running uh, service here. Um, while that's starting up, I will just show you. No, that is not the command I intended to type. Okay, so we got just a really simple simple deployment here. You can see there's a, a single deployment, single service. Like this is a very basic web service, just going to show that I can get some HTML out of it, basically. Okay, so we've got a service. We can now, normally, uh, you could just create an ingress object to expose this service. Contour would pick that up 
do its magic, and then you'd be able to see everything as per normal. Um, so what I am going to do, though, instead, uh, is we're going to create a HTTP route object. Now, this HTTP route object is sort of the, the HTTP specific bits that you can attach to the gateway. Now, each type of traffic that you might want to send through a gateway has a separate type of route. So there's HTTP route, there's a TLS route for things where you don't want to terminate your TLS uh, traffic, you want to just forward the TLS traffic through. Uh, there's a TCP route and a UDP route. Now, Contour only supports the HTTP route and TCP route because we're a layer 7 ingress controller. Okay? So, key parts about this one, uh, you can see um, the parent ref section, that is saying, hey, uh, my parent, I want, you, I want to bind to the Contour gateway in the project Contour namespace, that's the one I just created. Um, and I'm going to listen on the local.projectcontour.io host name and just send everything to the quad service that I just installed, right? Very basic config. This is all exactly the same as you would do it in an ingress. Like, well, not exactly, but you, know, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, so if we uh, describe this object, uh, what? Oh, I haven't applied it yet. Whoa. It's Friday, I'm sorry. Uh, apply. No, oh, thanks. Like I said, it's Friday. Okay, that's the wrong one. Yep. Okay, now it's applied. <laughs> now if I go back and uh, describe, there, um, this is the sort of normal describe you'll see, but the key part is the status. Um, you can see that the status, uh, Contour has updated this status. It's a valid HTTP route. It's been accepted. Um, that means that it's now been configured. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to, because I'm running uh, in, on kind uh, on a local machine, I did not want to be relying on a conference Wi-Fi. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick port forward to the to the Envoy pod that was spun up. Okay. Uh, now I should be able to hit this, and I get a bunch of HTML back. Um, yeah. I could uh, open up a web browser and give you the pretty view, but like, the key part is I get the HTML. If I then remove, okay, if I repeat that same command, nothing. Okay, that's because we've taken out the, the ingress thing, so yeah, that is the system working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, there's not, there's not a lot of there, there in this, but the whole point of the HTTP route object is to have a great place to put all of the config that currently if you're using Ingress Nginx or our HTTP proxy object lives in a bunch of other fields. This is a standard way to do that, right? And the whole point of this is that it's standard. You better pick up this HTTP route, take it over to the AWS uh, load balancer or the, you know, traffic or Kong or us or, you know, ambassador, uh, emissary or anybody, you'll be able to pick up that same uh, object and not have to rewrite the whole object all over again. Okay? So, with, with that, uh, I'm going to hand over to Nigel. Um, <coughs> Nigel's going to talk to you a little bit about where things are at, how you can get involved, and then we'll hit some questions. Take it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. <coughs> As was mentioned, uh, my name is Nigel. I am the community manager for Contour. I work over at VMware, and I wanted to talk to you a bit about how you can get involved with Contour. So community is integral to any open source project. Open source doesn't really work if we don't have it. And we are very sensitive to the needs of what our folks are asking for, and we want you all to be as much a part of it as you would like to be. So wherever you are in your Contour journey, uh, Orlin mentioned it earlier, we have inside of the Contour organization a community repo, which has everything to do with how we run our community. And one of the most important files you'll find there is our governance. And I want to point out that for a lot of projects, we think of contributors as people who are writing code. But for us, we think of contributors as anyone who is responding to issues or showing up to meetings or helping us in whatever way that you have capacity or skills or time to do. We understand that for a lot of people that this is a Holy, holy volunteer effort, and we are very respectful of the time that you volunteer for us and all of the effort that you put in, and we appreciate 
anything that you would like to do. And to that end, I'd encourage you to check out what we have in our governance stock about what it means to be involved and what that path to maintainership looks like, if that is your goal. And uh, I, as a community manager, want to hear from you about how your involvement in open source is gone and what you're looking for, how we can be a better steward of your time and make ourselves more open and available for you to pick up our project or any other project and start contributing. So if you, you have my permission to reach out to me directly and say, this is where I am in my journey, and this is, I want to start getting involved with open source, Contour looks like a good place to start, and we will help you as much as we possibly can along that journey. So where can you find us? Uh, all of the information about our community is on the website, so uh, projectcontour.io slash community. It has all the information about uh, when we meet, where we meet, but I'm going to go through some of it for you right now. Uh, we have community meetings every Tuesday in alternating time zones. I don't know if you noticed, uh, Nick has a bit of an Australian accent. Uh, so uh, we have our Australia-friendly time zones on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Uh, and uh, that happens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, our North America-friendly time zones happen on the second and fourth Tuesdays uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then we are starting a brand new Google group for handling email. Um, I can assure you if you join, you won't get blasted with a bunch of emails because I don't particularly like writing emails. Um, I will just give you the essential update. So we will probably average between one and two emails a week, but this is where you'll find uh, requests for comments, you'll find uh, what, are, what kinds of things we're working on, uh, any topics that we need to bring up in our community meetings, anything to keep you updated will be happening at this Google group and we'll start getting that up online uh, next week. It's available now, you can go and join it, but the first emails will start going out next week. And then you can add your voice to our conversation on Slack. Uh, so in the Kubernetes Slack workspace, we're at hashtag contour, and we are also on Twitter at, at project contour. Um, again, community is of vital importance to us, and there have been some great talks about community at this conference. Uh, if you have a chance to check out the talk that uh, Nancy Lancaster and Karen Chu did, or uh, John McBride uh, about what happens when you don't have a large community, especially of maintainers around projects, um, as well as the keynote this morning uh, from, uh, well, who was it this morning? Uh, Lee. Lee, yes, thank you, from Lee. With that, we want to open it up to questions. Um, there are three of us here. There are our names and handles if you would like to direct any questions to us in particular. I don't know if there's a microphone that's going around, um, but if not, we can just repeat the question. So does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask? Don't be shy. I promise I'm not going to be too Australian at you, I promise. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I, I didn't quite. So, what that. what reasons are there to continue to use Contour as opposed to Envoy Gateway? Well, um, the the simplest one is that Contour is a thing that you can run right now. Envoy is not. Envoy Gateway is not. <laughs> Envoy Gateway is the uh, intent to create a project, not a project as yet. Um, yeah, we have zero code. Uh, we are still in discussions about exactly how we're going to do that, but Contour is usable today. Um, any stuff you do with uh, Gateway API today with Contour, we'll, you'll be able to literally pick it up and, and use it with Envoy Gateway. That's the whole point of Envoy Gateway. But even if you, as I said before, even if you uh, want to learn about how, how to do some of our more advanced features, like you know, weighted load balancing, rate limiting, uh, external auth, um, and a whole bunch of the other uh, cool stuff that we've got built into the HTTP proxy, um, like I said, we are going to provide uh, a tool to help convert that config across. Um, so yeah, there's, we're going to make that process as smooth as possible. Um, but like, look, to be real, I really don't see, we're hoping to have a, sort of our first prototype cut for Envoy Gateway before KubeCon America um, later this year, but that's like the first prototype. Um, and there's a lot of work to do to get uh, Envoy Gateway to parity with, the, with Contour. Um, yeah, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty happy if we were like at parity with Contour by KubeCon uh, North America 2023, uh, which yeah, it's still like nearly two years away. 
Great question. Thank you so much. Uh, does anyone else have something that they would like to ask? Yes. Uh, okay, sure, sure. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, so we're uh, so you uh, so you asked about um, TLS support and uh, automatic TLS certificate selection. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, we support TLS, right? Like that's a no-brainer. Table stakes feature. Everyone should do that. Um, the uh, and we support um, the usual ways of doing this with having uh, you know a secret with your TLS certificates in it. Now, um, I'm not a can you maybe explain to me a little bit more about um, what you mean by like selecting multiple certificates? Um, so what it is, let's say I have a, about 100 different services in my cloud service, different domains, mm -hmm. and you have a few, I have a few white card specific domains, maybe just a few, you know, like Can we get the mic down here, please? Right, okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, look, uh, so if I were to summarize that, since you didn't have the mic, um, what you'd like to be able to do is to have, like, have to make it easier for developers to be able to expose uh, their, their services on their domain, on in, in individual domains safely without having to, like, provision their own certs. You want to be able to have a central platform team provision the certs and um, then have the things. So, yeah, right, right now, like, I mean, we don't do that for you. Um, we certainly um, would anticipate that you'd use something like Cert Manager to help with that. Um, so, what, so the way that I would suggest that you do something like that is, depending on exactly how magic you want to make it, um, what I would suggest looking at is uh, we, have, uh, we do have another CRD called a TLS certificate delegation that uh, lets you drop a TLS certificate into a secret in one namespace and then refer to that secret from another namespace, right? So if uh, you know, Orlin's, got, Orlin's running his uh, super awesome blog service in namespace, in Orlin namespace, and I'm uh, the platform owner, and I'm like, well, I want to make, I want to make that available on like Orlin.com, uh, and um, you know, I, and so he wants there to be TLS for that, but I want to make issue the, the key pairs. I can issue the key pairs in a secret in the uh, infra namespace and create a TLS certificate delegation that sits next to my, the certificates in my namespace that says, hey, Orlin's allowed to use, uh, you know, to use this TLS certificate from his, you know, Orlin namespace, okay? And so that's what I would recommend doing for this. Um, you, can, you can have a single TLS certificate delegation that covers like all secrets in a namespace. So you could have a single namespace that held all of the secrets for all the dynamically created things. In terms of actually dynamically creating them, that is not the, the business that we want to be in with Contour. Uh, you know, other people are doing that, doing it better. Creating and managing certificates is a hard problem that's very easy to screw up. And if you screw up, you are creating huge security problems for yourself. So I certainly would recommend if you want to do dynamic uh, certificate management, don't write your own thing. Use Cert Manager, use Vault, use, some, use something that someone whose job it is to do nothing but build that thing uh, has built for you. Um, so yeah, but that, that is how I would recommend doing that um, to make it a bit more magic. Uh, have, have it set up so that the certificates get, um, get uh, provisioned into a central uh, namespace and use TLS certificate delegation to move it across. Now, of course, there is, a, there is one other option here, and that is if everybody's uh, domains fit under the same TLD, you know, if everybody is at example.com and you can give them subdomains off example.com, then you can just issue a wildcard cert and use TLS certificate delegation to keep that in a safe place, and then have everybody just say, my TLS cert is the, the wildcard one. And so that, that is like the easiest possible way to do it, but it requires you, everybody to be exposing on, you know, uh, allin.example.com, yeah, rather than allin.com, yeah? Thanks. Does that, any, yeah, cool, great question, thank you. Do we have another? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Keep hitting us, man. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Same. Same person. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you have another question regarding authentication. Uh, and for example, we use the Nginx Ingress right now, and they're like extensive right custom authentication support. I'm wondering like, if you can share more details, what's the current status? So, yeah, so right now, um, the functionality that we have inside Contour um, allows you to use uh, Envoy has a. Um, Envoy has a standard for an external authentication server, 
which basically is a, a, a service that runs a gRPC endpoint that provides an API that Envoy has mandated. We don't control that API. Um, and we can tell, tell the Envoys that Contour owns that say, hey, when you get a request to this route, um, before you allow it to go through, um, pass the request off to this uh, external authentication server and it can do whatever the hell you want. Right? Like, so some people have, uh, we've got an example one that will do like basic auth for you, but um, lots of other people have ones that you know, will do full OADC or you know, talk to your AD or do a bunch of other stuff like that. Right? Um, so that's what we have support for today. Um, you know, uh, a complaint that I have heard that I think is completely justified is that there's a lot of fiddly, uh, yeah, fiddly, fiddly stuff in there. I, uh, family friendly show, so I can't say what I would say either. <laughs> otherwise. But um, yeah, so yeah, it's like there's a lot of fiddly, fiddly stuff you've got to do there to actually make everything line up and work. Uh, and so um, yeah, the, the sort of the effort that we're doing is to find ways to make that a little easier, whether that's um, update out the example implementation we've got, which is really not production ready. Um, find, uh, so a uh, community member, uh, Travis Hansen, shout out Travis, uh, has, um, has actually built uh, um, another authentication server um, that we haven't really had much of a chance to have a look at. So I'd like to have a look at that and see if we can make that a more sort of, you know, contour thumbs up uh, thing. And then lastly, as I said, um, Envoy actually has an experimental uh, uh, OAuth filter where the OAuth flow is actually done by Envoy, right? So you tell, you would tell your uh, HTTP route, you know, hey, I want to configure my OAuth flow in this way, and I, if, who here has configured OAuth in the past? Yeah, I, you all know, right, there's like 20 million settings you've got to have for that. So we're going to have to way, have a way for you to provide those 20 million settings uh, in, as part of your HTTP proxy or to your Contour install, so that then, and, but then if you, once we do that, and, and I, you know, get the design right, hopefully, um, then uh, you'll be able to configure Envoy, and Envoy will do that for you. you your uh, app will not have to do the OAuth flow itself, which, uh, you know, I'm sure we'd all be pretty happy not to have to have writer apps to do that, right? Like, <laughs> it's pretty hard and easy to get wrong. And if you want to file an issue in the repo and tell us a little bit more about some of the specifics of what you're looking for, um, that will help us keep track of it and be in communication. And that's for anyone. If you have any ideas, problems, questions, yeah. file an issue against the repo, uh, we'll triage it and get back to you about how we can incorporate your feedback into into the project. Yeah, I guess the way I would say that is issues are not just for bug reports. Yeah. You've got a question to ask us, you want to ask us for something, like the worst that we'll say is, yeah, sorry, that's our scope. Like, that's the, you know, the worst possible answer I can give you, but I, and I won't say that very often, um, although we have said it in the past about UDP support, so <laughs> maybe check that. We have an open issue about that one already, if that's what you want. But, um, you, know, and, you know, I'm making a joke there. Please just, I'd prefer that you open another issue and I point you to the one that we've already opened. Um, issues are free. I don't care if we <laughs> if we burn them uh, on people asking questions that we've already answered. Yeah. I would much rather have you ask the question and get a good answer than for you to be too worried about doing that. Okay? I, I, and every and the, the rest of us like will promise you that we will never give you a hard time for opening an issue. Um, that uh, you know, there's no stupid questions. There's no stupid issues. Every issue that you open, even if we've already answered the question. You opening the issue tells us that we haven't given you a way to find that question, the answer to that question, yeah. for yourself, right? Like we haven't, up, we need to update our documentation or something like that. Like every everything that you do for us helps us. And yeah. The best the way that you can help us help you is to tell us what we're not doing, and or to tell us what we are doing. Hey, yeah. positive feedback is nice too, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, hang on, wait one, for the one second. So hang on, I think the mic's, I think the mic's not on. Check, no. check. Okay, that's fine. Just ask the question, I'll repeat it. Yep. So follow-up question with the external auth. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I understood, it's only possible on the gateway object or the HTTP proxy object? So yes, external auth is currently only possible on the HTTP proxy object. Um, so you need to be using HTTP proxy to be able to use it. Okay. Yes. Are there any plans to uh, make it available on the route level, so to say, or is that a limitation within Envoy? Uh, so the HTTP proxy object does sort of have config on a per route level, so it's already on a per route level, um, but uh, if, if you're talking about with the gateway API, um, yes, there absolutely are plans for the gateway API to cover 
um, uh, auth and OAuth. Uh, but uh, like I said before, there's 20 million settings on it, and we really and the, we really want to have the upstream like come up with a good way to do that for everybody, no matter what implementation you're talking about. Um, and so that's going to take a while. Like designing that sort of API, the one thing that I have learned after nearly three years of I'm also a maintainer on the Gateway API, and the one thing I have learned after nearly three years of being a maintainer on the Gateway API is writing specs like that. It's really bloody hard. Like <laughs> you know, it's really hard to write a very clear, very well-defined spec that that people can actually use and we can actually implement. And so, uh, but at the same time, we've got to be really careful that we're not like messing it up by rushing, okay? So I, I really want, so external auth, rate limiting, um, circuit breaking, tracing, all of those things need to be present in the upstream gateway API. They are all on the list of things to do in the upstream gateway API, but we just haven't got to them yet. So yeah, um, yeah I mean, yeah, if, and Nigel's talking about finding ways to contribute. Gateway API desperately needs people who know about that sort of stuff, who need it to, to tell us more about the things. I mean, giving us the feedback in Contour also is effectively giving it to the Gateway API because like, hey, I'm right here. Um, but uh, yeah, but the, the more feedback we can get about that sort of stuff, the better. So thanks for the question, great question. Cool, thank you. Do we have any others? I love answering questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can tell I love answering questions because I'm not letting these guys talk. <laughs> I have one more short one, especially through the Gateway API maintainer. Can you give any ETA on the like on a two beta of the Gateway API? Uh, so yeah, the, the beta the beta for the first parts of Gateway API is due like any day. Um, it, we, but I, we were hoping to get it done before like before KubeCon, but we just keep finding like little things that we've got to fix up. Um, I hope in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, but I just we just it's like a hydrate, you know, you just. Keep, we, we, we think we're almost there, and we get down to the last thing, and we're like, okay, this is the last one, we're gonna resolve this PR. Someone really, a really helpful contributor helps us out with a PR, and they're like, they're like, oh, I just found this question about this edge case, and we're like, oh no, <laughs> you know, now we've gotta go back and design some more. Um, so, and that's just been happening heaps and heaps. But that's, that's again, we don't wanna rush this API, we might wanna make sure that it's fully spec'd out, and we don't leave big holes there. And so, like, the system is working. Sadly, it means the system is going slowly. <laughs> but yeah, so in, like real soon now is the only sort of time frame I can give you. Um, after that, we're gonna look to move uh, some of the, the thing with the Gateway API is we can move the objects one by one. Um, so we're, I would anticipate we're gonna be having pretty regular releases for like the next year um, of the Gateway API. Great question, thank you. How are we doing for time? I think we're actually technically mm -hmm. over, we're over time, yeah. but uh, yeah. look, uh, We've got time for one more question, maybe, if uh, anyone's really got one, but I think we might be out the questions, too. So yeah. there is that. Thanks very much. Yeah.